Hey everybody, uh, this is Billy Hartman and you're listening to the Gear Smith Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 19 of the podcast. Um, I hope this is a good one because I just realized I've just recorded over a previous episode of the podcast. So, uh, Clint, Clint Allen Janice, if you're listening to this, we're recording over you. <laughs> so, on that note, today's guest is Billy Hartman, and Billy's been pretty busy putting out some new music. So, uh, Billy, tell us how, you, how you've been lately. Uh, what all's been keeping you busy during this whole lockdown? Man... Well, the first month, uh, man, I was staying at home, taking care of the kid and writing a lot of music. Uh, did a couple co-writes with a friend of mine, uh, Jack Barksdale. And other than that, um, I mean, eventually I, I just now I started, I went back to work kind of in the middle of it. So I've been real busy working and trying to get back into shows cool well have you, have you been able to uh, get some of those shows booked because i know a lot of people it's, it's some people say they're getting them starting to slowly kick back up and other people it's been kind of like no nah, nothing yet so uh, how, how's it looking for your upcoming shows um so uh, i've had a couple of the venues contact me i just i honestly to tell you the truth i haven't had time i've been so busy with work so i haven't got anything booked but um if i and i don't know if you know i play uh bass for buck Fuffalo. And I know we've had some shows kind of pick back up. Uh, yeah. And so I've, I've got some bass gigs lined up, but I think uh, nothing nothing new in the line of acoustic shows for myself. I think last night I played with Zach back. Uh, we played at a place here in Stephenville called Ruby's Texas Bistro. And it was a little patio gig, and that was kind of nice. It was first venturing back out, and I got to open for Buck. Uh, for that full band show that we had, I opened that at the Mule Barn and Justin uh, Friday night, and that was that was interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome. Well, tell me about this uh, whole beans and cornbread release, because I got to tell you, when you when you release something called beans and cornbread, immediately people are going to know it's real in its country. So, kind of tell me about the process behind that. Yeah, um, man. Honestly, so we started doing a songwriter circle out at Buck Fufflo's. Um, shit, was it like two or three years ago? Yeah. But it, a year and a half, <laughs> maybe. Okay, a year and a half, two years ago, <clears throat> we started doing this deal where we would pick a topic, and there was probably eight or ten of us, and we would come out and we would all write on the topic and then present the new songs. And so I think the first topic was beans and cornbread. And then so it, it kind of just developed like the, ma- the majority forest. Oh, okay. The first topic was forest, which is on the record. Um, but yeah, so the majority of the songs were kind of, they were all wrote during that time period. And then the two or three other ones that are on there uh, just came afterwards. <clears throat> and uh yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I I did the record because I didn't feel like there's really anything out that I'd released that was um uh up to date with where I was musically. You know, I've I've gone I, I've gone through a million different genres. I feel like in my musical career, I started out in high school with a Texas country band, and then had a rock band, and then bluegrass, and then finally have kind of ended up where I am now. So I just wanted to get a record out that. Uh, that that showed where I am musically now, and hopefully I I'm kind of got some plans. Hopefully to do another record this year. I've actually started talking to the guy I recorded Beans and Cornbread with, and I think we're about to start recording the next record right here in the next couple months. Hopefully, cool. No rest for the weary. That's right. Getting that's right. Cranked out there. Well, if if we could let everyone on the podcast hear one of those songs right here, which uh, which one would you pick? Um. Man, <clears throat> doing well, doing swell. If I'd had it recorded, honestly, I messed up that song on the actual record. It, the, the the last verse on that is messed up. If I go back and re-record it, I would. And that's the song I would tell you to play. But um, I think "Walk with Me Tonight" or "Jimmy." Tell you what, we'll play one now and one at the end. Let's do uh, let's do "Walk with Me Tonight" right here up front. All right, that sounds good. This life's over And we cease to be I'll still be running From those memories Another day coming in 
Another night brings again Sorrow from the feelings I've been drowning in I pick myself up From bottom to the top Bending over backwards Now pray the demon stop Never had a minute To think about what was lost Worried about the reasons Never mind the cost And take a walk down the road Filled with dark and troubled souls Left behind in life to carry our heavy loads And no chance of leaving lucky One day we'll see the light And go ahead and take a step and walk with me now Stay fast on a straight line Breathe deep and take it in Release all them worries you carried deep within Tomorrow's a brighter day No trouble and you're on your way Living with the scars of your yesterdays A simpler frame of mind Tell stories just to pass the time they ain't never tried to hurt no one You could swear it on your life And take a walk down the road Filled with dark and troubled souls Left behind in life to carry our heavy loads And no chance of leaving lucky One day we'll see the light And go ahead and take a step and walk with me tonight Go ahead, take a step and walk me tonight. Walk with me tonight. Well, speaking of walking, you know, kind of walk me through your backstory. You mentioned, you know, you had different genres and different bands you played in high school. How, how did you get from your early days to where you are right now? Lots of drugs and lots of alcohol. <laughs> no Just- women, though. <laughs> no. Yeah. So somebody said no women. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's Buck. He's sitting here on the porch with me. That's awesome. How, how long did you go from you just kind of like starting to write music to getting an album out? Okay, so when I first started, I was probably like fourteen or fifteen, and the story on that is the only reason I learned how to play music was because I had some upperclassmen, real good friend of mine who's on the record, Wesley Holsford. Him and another guy came into like my seventh grade English class and did Tenacious D. I think they played <laughs> Trigger. And they played, and all the girls in the class loved it. So I was like, this is what I got to do. So that's I went home, and I was writing, and I was trying to get it good enough to where girls would love me and want to be with me like a rock star. And then, so that was, so, so 14, 15, 13, somewhere in there. And then, so technically my first album actually is a bluegrass record, which I put out a couple of years back, but, uh, uh, to this record, what got me here, um, is it, was that the question? Yeah. Or just kind of how long it took and what got you there? Oh yeah. No, it probably took uh, 12 I was lost. I don't do the math. Fifteen years, and then, uh, man, it's just going through bands. I really don't don't like playing with bands. I I had enough of them, and it, it just it's a pain in the ass. And uh, I just wanted to be able to write songs. Pretty much is what it comes down to. <clears throat> I wanted to be able to write and release, and just if people like it, they like it, and if they don't, you know. I can go listen to the radio, I guess. Well, I'm going to play one here in a second that kind of caught my attention when I was listening because a lot of your songs, I would say they have like a crossover between uh, Towns Van Zant's kind of sound and this one that I'm going to play in a second kind of had like the Bob Wills fiddle vibe to it. So I'm going to play Chicago. Awesome. I've been all around this big old world Never did find a plane Couldn't unfurl And if I get a chance Take me to Chicago I've 
The baby said bye, don't love you, well go and take yourself and your whiskey too And if you get a chance, take me to Chicago Take me back where the wind is high and everybody's happy and they never cry Take me to a place I call my home Take me to Chicago I'd take a bus, ride a train Steal a car, walk through the rain and Do what I need if you get me into Chicago I'd write a hot check, rob a bank Sell all the gas in my gas tank Do what I need if you get me into Chicago Well, Chicago ain't all that bad but I reckon I wanna know Cause when I'm feeling down and out In Chicago's where we go I woke up this morning, monkey on my back Damn near gave me a heart attack He said that it best keep moving to Chicago I said I got friends where I can stay Didn't even last for three damn days They told me it best keep moving to Chicago Take me back where the wind is high And everybody's happy and they never cry Take me to a place I call my home Take me to Chicago Thumb in the wind, rain coming down My own thoughts is the only sound that I can hear on my way to Chicago When I get close, start to feel that the city and lights is getting near And finally made it back home to Chicago Finally made it back home to Chicago So, which of your songs have the best backstories, and which ones mean the most to you? So, Easy Way's probably got the best backstory, I guess, if I'm thinking on Or, well, no. No, fuck that. Jimmy. Jimmy has the best backstory. So, there's a friend of mine from Ohio. His name's Jimmy Oss, and there was a couple years after uh, the bluegrass band I had ended, and so I, I started hanging out with Jim, and we would go... And we'd get drunk at the bar here in Stephenville and go watch whoever was playing at Bostock's or have a show or whatever. And uh, every time we get done with the shows, he would have his wife at the time come pick us up or he'd be driving. And he'd take us to McDonald's and he always called it McDowell's. <laughs> and he always got, he'd pull in, he'd be like, hey man, um, give me two of them sausage breakfast burritos and uh, one of the, give me one of them yogurt parfaits. And like, dude, it's not a parfait. It's a parfait. And he's just, he's dead set on it. It's his parfait. So we do that. And then, you know, and it's, uh, and uh, that's just kind of the, the guy Jim is. But then some of the backstory towards the song is like, it talks about it's boule bourbon off the top of the fridge and Winston Reds are all smoke, bitch. And that's, uh, that, that was, that's Jim Yoss and, you know, however many words that is. It's, you know, he always had a bottle of whiskey on top of his fridge and he smoked Winston Reds. And there's one night, speaking of the boule bourbon, where uh, me, Jim and Wesley Holtzford, who plays fiddle on Chicago, and gives it that Western swing, Bob Wills kind of vibe. Now I know what you're talking about. When I read that in the email, I was kind of wondering, I was like, where's the Bob Wills? But now it makes sense because Wesley was on the record. Uh, we're all sitting drinking this boule bourbon, and I remember Wesley. He may not like this story, but he got so drunk that night, he went to go take a piss, and, like, next thing we know, he's just barfing his guts out. And so it was kind of like, those nights, they definitely made me think of Jim. So I, I threw that off in the song, and uh, there was a night, uh, there's reference to a guy named Catfish, and he was a bass player and a songwriter in a band, the bluegrass band I had called The Hacks. 
<clears throat> and uh we were hanging out at a guy that does all my tattoos houston baker we're hanging out at his house one night drinking and uh jim came out and whatever scuffle we got into while we we're sitting there drunk he, he ran up and he stabbed me with this key that he had to his lifted dodge ram 1500 oh. rock star rims he stabbed me in the stomach with this key and fuck it, i remember pulling my shirt up i was like holy shit i'm bleeding i was like you stabbed me and it was it was kind of crazy i don't think he meant to <laughs> and uh but so th that's kind of the back line for that uh backstory for the second uh verse of the song and then uh on the third verse um it's talking about like, he goes back home to take care of his uh dad and uh he ended up having a heart attack while he was up there and like almost died and then of course the reference to mcdonald's breakfast and the two sausage burritos and the yogurt parfait and then we always used to go to castillo's and uh jim he loved his uh green sour cream sauce and chips i don't know if you've ever ate breakfast in stevenville but uh Oh, yeah. It's you got, you got Castillo's and then Jake and Dorothy's and used to it's kind of been on and off. I feel like for the past 10 years, you can go into Jake and Dorothy's and you can smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. And so that's kind of all the references and the, the back backstories for the different lines in the song. So that's 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 probably the the song with the best stories behind it. Definitely intriguing. If you could uh if you could make a music video to any of your songs, what would you pick? Um Chicago. Based on the sound it had, I think it'd be a good video. Um but based on the story you just told, I think I'll play I'll play Jimmy here. Boulay bourbon off the top of the fridge. Winston Reds are all smoke, bitch. Let's get stoned. Step outside between me you and the truck. Thought it almost died. The one winter night and it's cold as hell. The catfish showed up, liquor to break the spell. You slipped down the stairs and almost broke your back. And it's nights like that's where I wish I was at. Won't Jimmy come back to Texas? Got lots of pretty women and a Castillo's breakfast. But everybody down here sure is missing you. Oh, Jimmy, what you gonna do? Remember the night you stabbed me with your key? And the catfish sat there and watched me bleed. Liquor runs thick and blood does too Reckon that's why I always saw a brother in you and If the truth is always true Then it must be so I love you Me and all your friends will care about you And we'll till we die Found Jimmy come back to Texas We got lots of pretty women And a McDonald's breakfast Everybody down here sure is missing you. Oh, Jimmy, what you gonna do? You went back home to take care of your dad, and Lord knows it don't make us mad. It makes us proud to see you come through with the heart attack and everything else that you do. And you want to come back and say hello, I'll be sitting here with all you know. Drinking coffee and shooting the shit, and that's two things I know, you'll never quit. Won't Jimmy come back to Texas? We got lots of pretty women and a Jake and Dorothy's breakfast. Everybody down here sure is missing you. Oh, Jimmy, what you gonna do? Oh, Jimmy, we love you. Oh, Jimmy, what you gonna do? So what are some of your favorite venues and towns to perform in? Uh, honestly, my favorite venues here in the area are uh, Bostock's. 
but they just quit smoking inside the bars, which is kind of a bummer for me. That's like, it was the only bar I think I can still go to and smoke and they just stopped that. But, uh, still my favorite venues here in town to play boss Dogs, And then, uh, over in Bluffdale, they have the Greenwood saloon and those are like my two go-tos. Cool. What can people expect from you coming up? I mean, you mentioned you want to start recording another album sooner rather than later. And, uh, where can people follow your career? You know, if people aren't familiar with your music and your work yet, where, where would you direct them for social media and things like that? Uh, the best place is Instagram. I, I say, I, I really don't use Facebook a whole lot unless it's, uh, my friend shows or like if, if I have a show, I'll post about it on Facebook, but Instagram's probably the best way to keep up with me and, uh, what's going on musically. Awesome. What's your, uh, what's your handle? Uh, I think it's at, hell i don't even know man you give me one second i'll tell you exactly what it is i know it's it's it's, it's very uh not cryptic but just reverend underscore billy hartman there we go and if, if you can't actually, find it it's on my i'm following his page so if y'all if y'all forget that you can go to my instagram and find it from there yeah, uh, and uh, I'm an ordained minister, so if anybody needs to get married or buried, I'm here for you. <laughs> well, the the big three questions that I close all these out with. The first one is, if you could collaborate with anyone out there, who would it be? Uh, man, that's a that's a tough question. <laughs> um, uh, anybody in the world, man. Um, maybe Chumbawamba. Wow. <laughs> I did not see that coming. No, no. On a serious note, uh, man, there's so many artists I would love to sit down and just talk to that I, I couldn't pick one. Timberwolf is kind of my go-to if I'm in a pickle, though. Uh, see, now I feel like I'm going to have to close the episode out with them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the greatest Texas country song in the world. There you go. <laughs> I've, I've heard weirder things covered. Uh, the second question, if you could headline any venue out there, where would you go? Uh, man, I go back to the old quarter. Uh, I got to play the old quarter with uh, my, my buddy Zach Pack and uh, had another friend of mine who who was happened to be in the area at the time uh vincent neil emerson and he came and played that show with us and i would i would love to do a headlining show at the old quarter that'd be really cool where where'd you say that was uh, i think it's in galveston oh yeah okay i was about to say yeah. i used to live in houston and i remember hearing about one so i didn't know if yeah that was that uh, one. They, they used to have it in houston but i think it got sold and they reopened the new one so it's down there oh okay well, the, the grand finale question kind of scares me because if it's any bigger than what you've already told me, it's it's going to be a rocker. But what is the funniest or craziest story you can tell from your music career so far? The funniest or craziest story? Man, I don't know if they're appropriate for radio. Man, I don't. Um, I'll, I'll just tell like the coolest story that or to me personally that I've had was I was at the it's not crazy or funny, I guess, but I was at the blue light one night and I got an encore and that was really cool. So, Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. No, it was an opening act. So that, that was, I guess it's not funny or crazy, but it was just like the coolest story I have. And or to me anyways, hey, everybody else can be like, Oh, that sucks. But <laughs> Well, you gave him a pretty crazy story with the parfit and the stabbings. <laughs> I think. It yeah, I know. Out. Yeah. All that, that, that should be enough. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, you know, they call it the Lubbock stare. You know, if you can win the crowd over in Lubbock, you can win any crowd over. So that's actually a pretty impressive thing. I don't, I don't know if I could do it now. There was lots of amphetamines involved back then. So <laughs> in, in Lubbock, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, Billy, we're looking forward to hearing this new music that you're already going to start working on because, I mean, it, that's a pretty quick turnaround, and the album you just put out was really good. So I'd encourage everyone to go hear it on Spotify and iTunes, or just be a rebel and buy it because you know that's what the cool kids are doing. So yeah. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Garrett. I really appreciate it. No problem. I'll try to catch you up in Stephenville soon. Yeah, man. Next time you come into town, give me a shout. I got a couch for you. Uh, we'll cook some cheeseburgers, and we'll go to the bar and get drunk and cook some food. And we'll make some parfits afterwards. That's right. We'll go by <laughs> we'll go by McDowell's and get some sausage burritos and go get parfits. <laughs> well, if we, could, uh, if we could close this thing out with a song, which one would we pick? Uh, um, we already did Jimmy in Chicago. Yep. 
Man, uh, you can close it out with beans and cornbread. Sounds good. All right, folks, beans and cornbread. Beans and cornbread and biscuits and gravy. Come on now, don't say for me, but now, baby. Make me one more plate. Chicken fried steak and taters too. There's plenty of bacon for me and you. We got plenty to go around. Woman load of cook so fine, drive a sane man, have his mind. Never had a reason passing through then. You must have never had chicken fried from you. Beans and cornbread and biscuits and gravy. Come on now, don't say for me, but now, baby. Make me one more plate. Pick it out. Meat loaf and casserole. Crack that egg, throw it in the hole. Ooh, make me feel good. Baked potato and steak on the grill And count damn a salad, surely it's still the deal and Just make sure the steak, it ain't well done Woman Lord cook so fine and dry the same man Half his mind Never had a reason passing through then You must never had chicken fry from you Beans and cornbread and biscuits and gravy Come on now, don't say for me, but no, baby Make me one more plate Woman Lord cook so fine and dry the same man half his mind if I had a reason passing through, then I must have never had chicken fried from you. Beans and cornbread and biscuits and gravy. Come on now, don't say for me, but now, baby. Make me one more plate. Oh, baby. Make me one more plate. Don't forget them Brussels sprouts, darling.